So I was thinking of ways to hasten the natural decline. For instance, if we voted in the American Jobs Act, and there just was a vote on it a few days ago where Mark Baggage voted for it and Lisa Murkowski mm-hmm. voted against it, but I believe if, if we voted for it, that would hasten the decline of the American Republic because it has a provision in it that would uh, prevent discrimination of people who are unemployed, which is basically a job for lawyers and to tie up American industry. Yeah, we, we actually talked about, uh, Josh talked about how all employers discriminate. That's what job interviews are about. Right. So so to hasten this natural collapse, I'd like to see what you, you believe. Should we vote support this American Jobs Act or oppose it like I oppose it, or should we just kind of hide under the blankets and do nothing. What, which of the three choices would you take? Um, I don't, I don't and are, and are there any other choices, David? Don't don't get roped into just a, no, the, no, the no, false no, choices. No, 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 believe. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I don't like any of those, um, I, and I'm not doing any of those. I am ignoring the political system to the maximum extent I can ignore it, okay. but that doesn't mean doing nothing, right? That means instead of wasting time um, reading about and worrying about political stuff and voting and getting all wrapped up in candidates and all this rhetoric, right? Instead of wasting time and energy doing that, I am spending my time and energy doing things to take care of myself, to prepare myself for what I believe is going to happen. And it, it might not play out how I'm how I'm thinking it will, but at least you know even if it even if it doesn't, at least I haven't wasted time on people who are lying to me, which is what politics is. Well, I, I, I think you're doing good reading your books and everything, and, and you advocate some good things, and I, I think that's ne- you're doing net good, in my opinion. However, I still cling to the belief that we can salvage, that we can avoid the collapse, possibly, and we can avoid what might come out of the collapse, which is martial law and, and a dictatorship and a, and a one-world government that would last 1,000 years. I would never be able to sleep if I thought I didn't do everything in my po- in my power to try to prevent our descendants from having to live for 1,000 years under a one-world government dictatorship, and that's why I'm going to oppose the American Jobs Act. Sure. Incremental that's, salvation. That is, that is, you know, that's great. Um, whatever people are passionate about, they should do. If, if, you're not, if you're not passionate about something, you're not going to do it well. And oh. if you are passionate about something and you've examined your reasons and your causes and you understand what you're doing and what the results are going to be, or you think you do... You know, by all means, um, by all means, go for it. This is something I asked uh, Lou Rocco about at the at the Casey Summit. I said, you know, well, you have all these people who want to devolve state power, and and you know, um, and they all have different ways of doing it. You know, we all have our own little our own little pet projects. I said, what, you know, what do you think is the most effective way? And he gave this answer. He said, well, let a hundred roses bloom, right? Mm-hmm. There is no there is no right answer. Everybody yeah. will do what. Uh, what they can do most effectively if they do what they're passionate about. Okay, sounds good. Thank Man, you I don't call. think there is a uh, any way. I mean, trying to keep this thing propped up is a waste of time for sure. I mean, it's de- destined to fail. The the money system itself, which is what this all revolves around, is the money system, and it has to mm-hmm. fail. I, I think part of what we're looking at here, Josh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, on this, is that we're all in this great big ship of state together, and we recognize that the ship is sinking. And there are some people who are on board the ship who are doing the best they can to bail out and say, no, 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 we can keep it from sinking. Come on, let's bail it out. Come on, why aren't you working with me to bail out the system? Come on, come on. There are some people who are sitting up on the deck saying there's nothing wrong with the system at all. What's wrong with you? You are some kind of a rabble rouser. Why don't you just go back down below decks and do what you're told? And then there are some people who are saying, there's got to be a lifeboat. There's got to be a lifeboat. Where okay, if there's no lifeboat, can I at least get a life preserver, something for me? Get my get my kids in a uh, you know some kind of floaty device or something. I got to get off this boat. Mm-hmm. Maybe I, yeah, maybe you know there aren't there aren't lifeboats for all of us. So some of us are taking you know broom handles and breaking them up and lashing them together and and doing what we can. But, sink or swim. Right, no. but yeah, I mean my take on it is it's like. Uh, you know, it's like the Titanic struck an iceberg and has a giant hole in it, and and you have somebody with a, you know, a, a wine glass trying to, you know, bail, pull, bail pan out water, yeah. pan water out one wine glass at a time, and there's a giant hole from it hitting an iceberg. But uh, for for the money system, for people out there who don't understand why the money system is doomed to fail, there's a really quick and easy analogy. Um, a, our, our debt-based money system, every dollar that exists is borrowed into existence. So the Treasury borrows all of its money from the Federal, Federal Reserve. And so all that money has to be paid back at interest. So for every dollar that gets borrowed into existence, a dollar is owed back plus interest on that dollar. So the question is, where does the dollar to pay the interest come from? 
right? So you borrow one dollar into existence, and then you owe the original dollar back plus a dollar in interest at some later date. Where does the second dollar come from? Well, that has to be borrowed into existence. But then when you borrow that one into existence and use that to pay off the interest, now you still owe the new dollar that you borrowed plus interest on it. And so the the uh, debt-based fiat money system that we have, which which is exacerbated by fractional reserve banking, it only works as long as new debt is being borrowed into existence faster than interest accrues. Which is why they're printing more and more money. Which is, And they have to. There's actually no way to balance the budget. Congress cannot balance the budget without destroying the currency because there aren't enough dollars out there to pay off all the debt that exists. So this is why when people start to liquidate debt and you see a collapse in the uh, M3 money supply, which is credit money plus base money, the experts at the Federal Reserve start freaking out because they know that if everybody paid off their debt, including the U.S. government, um, we would run out of money to pay off debt before we run out of debt, and then you have to have massive debt liquidation. And that's what's going to happen. Uh, there's no way out of that. 458-TALK is a number. All the lines are full. Let's go to the next call. Good morning. This is problem, or excuse me, this is Patriot Clement. Who's on the phone? Lisa. Lisa, go ahead. Yeah, there's a great pamphlet, only about 50 pages, called Common Sense, An Introduction to the Dangers of the New World Order. And it gives a, the full scope of the debt problem and, um, you know, the groups that are pulling the strings and how NAFTA and GATT, you know, uh, brings us into international tribunals and we've lost power in all these different ways. And the website is fearorlove.com. So in 50 pages, you can get really up to speed on, on what, you know, about the IRS and all that stuff, too. So really, really, really good. So it's called Common Sense by George Humphrey, and the website is fearorloved.com, all one word. Cool. Th- uh, thanks for that. I, yeah, I've seen thanks George Humphrey call. interview before. He's a really he's a solid guy, and that's that's one of the positive things about the whole collapse is like the the new world order, one world government, whatever you want to call it. Um, all all the plans by these kind of elite politicians to to unify the world into serfdom are falling apart right now. That's what's going on in. In Europe, with the collapse of the uh, of the euro, so four five eight talk is the number. Good morning. Who's this? Hi, this is Chris. Hey, Chris, what's on your mind? Um, I too recently have come to believe that something is going to happen in this country. And what, in your opinion, is the one book that we can read to catch up for for us, the naive? Um, <laughs> and the- I, Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the uh, the easiest book to read to understand at least the financial side of it is okay. Peter Schiff's book. Um, it's How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. How an economy grows. How How an economy grows. Oh, how. And okay. why it crashes. And you can read that in you know 45, 50 minutes. It's it's really really simple. It boils down the whole economic thing. And if you got a computer, there's some great uh, YouTube. If you go on our website and go to the YouTube site. There's some great videos there that really explain quite easily. I mean, my kids watched one last night on banking in the Federal Reserve. They actually know what fractional banking system, what fac- fractional banking is now. Um, there's some really good web, uh, YouTube videos there if you want to. It's, yeah, the, that one's the that danger one's of homeschooling right there. Your kids are learning how to think on their own and learning things that aren't taught in the, the public school system. That, what is wrong with you, Josh? A lot of yeah. things. <laughs> what was his last name, Peter who? Peter Schiff, S C H I F F, and that okay. and that video Josh just talked about is called um, Money Banking and the Federal Reserve. Okay, thank you so much. Thank yep. you for the thank call. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Oh, this is Cecily. Cecily, Cecily. thanks right, for calling Cecily. in. Yeah, I was uh, listening to the radio and and they were saying the people in Talkeetna didn't want this to sit in the dam and, and all that and. And I figured, well, the remedy would be like the Fairbanks did to this to to to, to my brother. They just go down and put uh, con- uh, um, condemning their places that they live and taking all their stuff away and making them pay for it. And then they got all that property without people's tax dollars. They just took all those people out the same way they took out my brother. And so then they can build their dam, and so the mob can rule and tell you where you can live. And they have no problem doing it, do they? Oh no! So it's it's okay. The 
my brother did gather up stuff, and he's been living on the barter system for 30 years. He's lived in Alaska, and I thought that they had grandfather rights to what you have there. And, but uh, none of those law, laws apply, and neither do does, you know, like the Ten Commandments where thou shalt not steal. They still did go in and steal. So um, anyway, I don't know what rules they're living by, but they make them up as they go along. And and I and uh, there's a sticker that I have. It's called. It says "Not Yours," and it's from. It comes from a poem that about rape, and it starts out every day they take away another say in which way you decide how you ride the tie. You must abide their rules, use their tools, be their fools. Take my liberty, I'm whack. I can't fight back. Anyway, I'm too little. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. Thanks. They the do mom. live by a rule. It's called a rule of force, a rule of violence. Mm-hmm. Until we wake up and see that. I mean, her brother's a perfect example. You will do this on your property. That's why I was against the grandfather rights when they were trying to pass that deal with the borough assembly last year. You either have rights or you don't have rights. Nothing grandfathered what? I mean, I, I can look through history, the history of this country. I don't see anything about grandfather rights. I never read anything John Locke talked about grandfather rights or Madison saying, well, you know, you have grandfathered property rights. You either have a right or you don't have a isn't right. Isn't that concept of grandfathered rights, isn't that connected with slavery? Yes. Yes, absolutely. It was, uh, I can't remember exactly now, it was after uh, slaves were freed, quote unquote. The uh, slaves were grandfathered in, their rights were grandfathered because uh, they didn't have any rights, quote, you know. We, I believe they did. They're human beings. They have rights. Either, either you have but rights or you don't have rights. The either government, somebody's the government had to tell themselves, basically, this goes back to who was actually promoting slavery. It was actually the government. The government had to grandfather them rights. When And when they did that, they didn't actually say that they had rights. They had the rights that they gave them. And if you're getting rights from someone, you don't actually which is, have those in here. Which is what I really, really irritates me about when people talk about how the Constitution gives us certain rights or how the the such and such assembly voted to give us the right or the Supreme Court gave us the right to such and such. It's, it's BS. Yeah, the Constitution had nothing to do with the people. I don't know why no one understands. It has nothing to do with us. Nothing. Also, this was a document it's supposed for the to people, restrain the government, the right? The people that were going to be in this government had to take an oath to, and they were saying, "I will adhere to this document." Had nothing to do with the people. And that's why it's all negative. It's all negative rights. So you will not interfere with the right to, for people to to gather. Well, it didn't work out too good. You will not interfere with the right for people to have their own religion. You will not interfere with the right for a person to speak out what's on his mind. You will not interfere with the right for a person to bear guns. Yeah, and we've turned it around completely to well. Through our education system, it's come down to this document gave you, the people, your rights. And we can actually take those rights away with an amendment. (laughs) Exactly. Well, gentlemen, we're at the end of the show. Again. Actually, and we've given several action points. You recommended that book. What was the name of it again, Dave? How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes by Peter Schiff. And we also talked about uh, subscribing to Dollar Vigilante. Yep, and also visit the website patriotslament.blogspot.com. See you next week.